what up, 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 welcome to the Bruce Cooper Podcast. Today, had my buddy JR, otherwise known as, aka, Dude I Rage on Twitch. Make sure you check him out. Absolutely awesome interview. I learned a lot about JR, uh, more than I, I mean, there's some things that surprised me, particularly, I didn't. His dad's a sheriff. Anyway, you'll see. You'll see. Thank you so much uh, again for listening. Thank you for the support. Thank you for checking out the podcast again. This is episode eight, which blows my mind. Eight weeks of doing these, uh, or not eight weeks, but eight episodes. Uh, be on the lookout for more. Uh, we got a lot more interviews coming up. Uh, I'm scheduling people pretty much every day at this point. Thank you so much for reaching out. Thank you so much for wanting to be involved. Uh, enjoy this one. I had a lot of fun, as always. And thanks again uh, for J- uh, JR, a- a.k.a. Dude I Rage. Make sure you check him out. Twitch.tv forward slash Dude I Rage. All one word. Thanks again for listening. Enjoy. I love you. Well, awesome. I am here with my good friend, JR, otherwise known on Twitch as Dude I Rage. Is it Dude I Rage on Twitter, too? It is. Yes. Right. Cool. Cool. Well, welcome, man. Thank you so much for doing this. I know it's I know it's weird and awkward and bizarre, but it'll get better. It always did the conversation always starts out a little awkward and then by the end it's like it's awesome and I feel really good about it. So, yeah, thank you for taking the time out of your day to take part in one of my weird experiments. I really really appreciate it, man. I don't think see I'm not I'm a very social person, so I'm it's not even weird. Don't even worry about it. Dude, I'm excited. I, Let's do it. I am not. <laughs> I I may I may try to be on Twitch, but in real like in real life, man, I am well, real life. In reality, I I've just developed into this weird introvert. Have you are do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert or do you not do you not subscribe to that whole I don't really believe in that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, mythological. Kind of, you are how you are, man. I mean, yeah. it's just either you don't or you do. You know what For I mean? For sure. I just, I know that like I get exhausted. Like when I go, when I go to like a party or something, I'm like tired at the end of the, but some people are like, it, like jazzed up after like partying all night. I, for but, me. Uh, so they what is what is like what do you mean by partying like not I like par- drinking the whole time no. playing beer pong like yo it's lit like yeah yeah i mean uh, not like- not necessarily okay partying is the w- wrong word like just let's say you like at a let's say you were uh at a booth at twitchcon right for six hours and there was it was just like social interaction and it what's really weird and to even like add to this further Nowadays, like no one has social interaction unless there's like drinking and beer pong involved. But let's just say you were to you were to just hang out and be social without any like without being intoxicated or anything like that. Would you feel good at the end of that or would you feel exhausted at the end of that? I th- I think I it would depend. I really think it depends. But generally, I'm I feel pretty good, like that I've connected with people and. Yeah. You know, we've had these conversations or we've gone out and seen a movie together or had lunch after that or just done lunch, you know, those sort of things. I don't know. I feel good. That makes me feel good. That Like, yeah, that's good energy. For sure. You know what I mean? Now, I know. I, and I used to be the same way. And I don't know, like, not. I shouldn't say I used to be the same way. Sometimes I am, but I'm finding more and more that I'm, like, fucking exhausted at the end of that. And I and it's it's weird. Or sometimes I'm not. And I think... I don't know. I guess it's just the person that I'm hanging out with. If it's a fucking struggle to hang out with them, excuse my language, I'm getting heated. <laughs> if it's yeah, you okay? Take a deep yeah. breath. It's fine. It's like if I'm hanging out with somebody who like Shane or something, I just want to go home, you know. But if I'm hanging out with like you, I'm just kidding. If it's no, you it, know, like, you, listen, dude, like Shane, like uh, you're talking about Shane live, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, meeting. I wouldn't. You, I would not want to hang out with Shane for longer than 10 minutes. Yeah. I get exhausted just saying hello to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, it's it's weird, man. It's getting better. I, I don't know if it's seasonal or what, but it's... It, you know, I think it's just age, man. Like, yeah. How old are as you? As we get older... Yeah, I'm, I'm 28 years old. Okay. But I, I have less time. Like, I, I feed off energy, right? So, like, 
I'm a very social person. I'm very easy to talk to. Like I can go up to a complete stranger. I do it every single day. And it's one of the things I pride myself on is being able to talk to anybody like we're best friends or like, you know, I've known them forever, whatever. Yeah. But if that energy is short toned or negative or they got something going on, they're stressed about, I feed off that and I just don't want to be there anymore. Yeah. And, and I think generally as we get older, we start to pick up on those things and perceive those things very clearly. So you might be hanging out with somebody that's just not as positive because you're a very positive person. I think that's one of the things that's like, that's one of your best traits. Like well, that's thanks, why people man. really enjoy you. That's why I enjoy you because you're, you're super positive, you know, that's good. Yeah, um, I appreciate so that. I can feed off your, your positive energy. Whereas if I'm hanging out with person B and they're like, Oh dude, this was so terrible. And they yeah. just keep, going on and on. i'm like okay well i'm gonna go hang out with bruce because bruce is positive and like he's got shit going on but you know what i mean he's yeah, not yeah. gonna make it worse well and i think too i think a lot of times too like people can be caught at the wrong day like i know it happens on twitch all the time like somebody will have uh, a bad day and like but their job is to still be there or or whatever they've chose to be there and it's really rough because I've had a bad day and I've put myself in a situation where I can't get out of it. And I always get, I always become afraid that like people are going to judge me as not judge me, but people are going to assume that this is how I always am. So like, do you have, do you, do you have like strategy in place for when you're having a bad day as somebody who, who is more, you know, who feeds off like positive energy. Are you able to maybe like detect that in yourself? Like if you're like having a shit, like a, I'm sorry, go ahead. Elaborate. Wait, wait, wait elaborate. Yeah, if ahead. you're having a shit day and you recognize that you're having a bad day, but you're in a situation where you have to be social, are you able to recognize that you're having a bad day and reverse it? No, not always. Like yeah. I recognize, I know like, so there, there are times like when I go to work, okay. And and I, I hate to be that way, but like I'm in retail. So like, okay. There are certain people that work at my job that I just absolutely love to be around. Right. I'm attracted to their, their energy. Like I'm instantly happy. Yeah. And then there are days when I'm there and it doesn't matter who's there when things aren't getting done <laughs> that I'm happy to do when I'm there, then that energy turns negative. And I can, I can tell that I'm angry or upset or irritated and people will come up to me and I know already and like I are I wear my heart on my sleeve so like I'm not afraid to tell anybody how I'm feeling because I feel like that's important I feel like if you feel a certain way you need to be upfront and positive or positive I'm sorry upfront and um honest honest yeah. about this sort of thing right always and uh, so I'm very it doesn't matter like if I'm working with a customer I'm gonna let them know and that's unique because you don't see that like they'll tell you people will tell you you shouldn't do that and I'm right. like Right. Listen, I'm going to tell a customer every time, like, hey, just so you know, I don't know what's going on with this. I'm yeah. having a day. Bear yeah. with me, you right. know, because I think it's important for the customer to know, like, you know, hey, it might take a little bit of extra time for, for you to figure this out because you don't know what it is and you're having a bad day. Yeah. And, and people actually really respond to that. Like customers really respond like, dude, that I'm sorry to hear that. Take your time. Do what you need to do and we'll figure it out. And it's OK. And it and it works out you know, in the end for me, I think is, I don't, I don't remember what the question was. Yeah, I don't no, know no, where no. I'm going with this. No, that's perfect. Do you ever get a customer who's like, listen, like I need somebody to get this for me now though. So will you get somebody else? Like, do you ever get pushback on that? You, you know what? Like I, for what I, for what I'm doing, I've been doing it for so long. Like I don't mind going and doing things. Yeah. It's the only time when I mind doing things for people is when the people that can do them just simply don't want to do them. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's, it's just laziness. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's worst. that's when I get irritated. Right. For sure. For sure. But that's not the customer's fault. That's just employees. But that's just the workforce in America or around the world. There are people like that everywhere you go. Yeah. Do you like what you do? No. I love yeah. streaming. Yeah. Uh, streaming full time has been the pleasure of my of my life, dude. It's For it's sure. like what I want to do. I love it. I absolutely love it. But um I what I do actually is retail. Right. Um, but I've been doing retail since I was fifteen years old. Okay. Um, so now I'm twenty eight years old. So it's a long time. Yeah. Um, and I've been everywhere. I did, I did, I worked for Kohl's, I worked for Walmart, I worked for Kmart, I worked for Toys R Us. Um, oh wow. 
I worked for Dick Sporting Goods. So like I've been everywhere and it's, and it's not because I, I left those places because I couldn't do it. It's because there's poor people. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's just, just, they don't know how to respond to, or talk to people. The management is poor. Retail's so, rough. Like re- people always say that shit. I worked retail for a long time too. And I always hated like, I, oh, I had a hard day. Well, I mean, it's retail. It's like, no, I mean, take the retail Re- part out of it, out of it. Like, you're treated like shit when you work in retail. Retail and fast food and, like, anybody who who has done these things will, will mostly agree are the hardest jobs you can ever do. And it's not because the job itself is hard. It's because you have to deal with people yeah. from all sorts of different backgrounds every day at all hours of the day. And you don't know what they are going through. You like you could have a bad day, but it doesn't matter because you have to wear a fake smile yeah, yeah. You have to help that customer. So it's like extreme, especially in food. Dude, hats off to anybody that works in food. I've like, never worked you, in food. I, I Well, I worked oh. at KFC when I was 16 for like one year or it not even awful, a year. It was, right? it was it was terrible. It was the yeah, worst awful. experience ever. Yeah, I worked. Uh, I actually worked at their uh, competitor. I worked at for Popeye's. Oh, OK. And I did that for a year and it was oh yeah, god man. i, I it, it was it was a nightmare it's brutal for me it was mostly like the people i worked with were you know selling drugs out of the drive through window and <laughs> dude, oh, just lovely, sketchy, dude, just sketchy stuff and it, it just legitimately scared me like i i saw like yeah i mean and, and as a 16 year old you know that that's probably just common but like for me i was just like ooh, like I just you know i just want my mom <laughs> So yeah, that's that's a, pretty. I, I had a similar situation like that, not for for fast food, but long story short, I got a job. I thought it was legit. They told me they were going to pay me so and so an hour, and then I the next day I went to that job. We hopped in one of the other employees' vans. They were popping in their own mixtapes. Yes, this actually happened, and they all pulled out their own stif- different styles of drugs and were doing their drugs in the car while I'm sitting in the middle what? of the back seat in a uniform with a clipboard like what the heck did i just get myself into yeah man yeah that's yeah, that crazy. happened <laughs> was it like a door-to-door thing or were they just getting like amped yes. up or something it was a door okay so what it was supposed to be was we were supposed to and this the whole thing was a scam you're supposed to go they literally trained me this way like literally they trained me to go behind each person's house that i was going to knock on look into their gas meters and read all their stuff and pretend I know what's going on. Like the gas company sent me and I was supposed to try to sell them some sort of insurance plan for that so that their gas bill wouldn't raise. But the, the yes, dude, it's completest. A, if anybody's listening to this and you get that, do not do it. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. And they can upcharge you anytime they want once you sign your contract. But that's what it was. Crazy. And I thought it was legitimate, and it is not. And yeah. I and I went out with these guys, and they all, I mean, the drugs. And dude, I, we could we, we'd have to say the story for another day because it would take the entire hour. Yeah. But I could tell you everything that happened, and it was the craziest that's thing ever. Horrifying, dude. That like that's yeah. really that's legitimately scary. Wow. Yeah. Needless to say, I went in one day and they were like, I guarantee you will not be back tomorrow. And I was like, oh, I'll be back. And I didn't go back ever again. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And in, in, in just crazy. And my brother did something where he got this. He like went, he took it, he responded to this job offer. And it was at this like, you know, those, you know, like when car dealerships will go into like a remote location or something, how they have those like little. They're like sheds, but they've like full rooms inside. Like they're, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly. Trailer house yeah. things. Well, mm-hmm. it was like, went to one of those and there was like a table with like a few other kids. And then they were going to go to a mall and like set up a kiosk or something. And then he ended up just going back to his car and going home. Like he was like, he, but there was drugs involved. I can't remember. It was weird, dude. There's so many of those out there, and they must work because people keep doing them. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Dude, it's the sketch factor, like, and one thing I've learned in my life is that I should always listen to my intuition. Like, some people don't have that. Yeah. But like, I have a gift of picking up on things, and like, I always, I'm, I'm, I already know something's wrong. Like when I'm approaching somewhere or something's about to, ha- I can feel it. It's like a sixth sense, huh, yeah. and I never listen to it. But now as I'm getting older, I'm like, okay, this is wrong, red flag. 
I'm I'm going the other way. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a it's probably a good thing to listen to. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you're you're 28. So I'm 32. I remember being I remember you know being 28. It was only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Um Right. Are you are you like excited for turning 30? Are you not excited cuz 30 is a real it's a possibility at this point, JR, like it's going to happen. Uh <laughs> It's a possibility. Yeah, like well, are you, hopefully I make it there, No, right? you will. I mean, no. <laughs> I remember legitimately being 20, 21 and being like, I wonder if I'll live to 30. I remember be, like asking myself that, being like, I hope I do. And you now know that what, I'm, man, like, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no. I mean, that's it. Like now that I'm 32, it's like, fuck, like, you know, I, like I used to think like I used to be so worried about age. And like, I think as as a race, as people like we just we consume our lives with time and counting everything and like. I don't believe in that. So I, I like as I've gotten older, I don't like to do that anymore because, yeah, we're getting older. And, yeah, eventually one day we will die. And like, I don't yeah. want to think about that. I just want to live my life. You know sure. what I mean? So, yes, you know, I hope that God grants me two years for me to hit 30 <laughs> yeah, and yeah, beyond. Yeah. No, no but, doubt. You know, I'm just I, saying I, when I turned 30, thir being 30 is rad. It's the best years of my life. Abs hands down. I, yeah, it's like, not something I'm thinking about. No, I I'm living my life you yeah. know, one day at a time That's for sure. It. 30s just, it's different. Like I think it's, for me, I talked about this on the last episode too. Like for me, I, I, uh, I never thought like it was really impactful, man. Like I had a lot of, I had friends died, family members die, got married, uh, found something I was really passionate about, stopped caring so much, like just kind of started, th you know, throwing up the like, I don't, I'm going to start living life for me, like mentality, like it's really, and I don't think it has anything to do with the number of age or whatever. I think it was just a realization that happened to ha that happened to come on in my thirties. And I think a lot of other people experience it around the same time in their life too. I'm just saying like, it's something, if you, if you ever had any doubt, like that, like this, I would, I wouldn't take this time in my life back for anything. And I couldn't say that in my twenties for a lot of my twenties, twenties were rough for me, but thirties have been awesome. Well, you know, I think, I think twenties is like supposed to be rough, really. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people will say like, you're going to experience, you're going to do a lot of dumb things when you're a teenager and you do, but it's like, once you turn 18, you can buy things legally. You, when you right. turn 21, you can buy alcohol legally. Then you really start to like live your life freely, make these decisions. You do, you kind of decide, you know, am I going to go to college? Am I going to get this degree in this? Am I going to yeah. pursue this? And then while doing that, you really kind of decide and figure out like, okay, well, this is what I thought I wanted to do, but I really don't enjoy this. Like yeah. I, I have, I have a two year degree in criminal justice, oh, wow. which a lot of people know don't know. Yeah. Right. Um, but I never pursued it. So like I went through all the hoops. I went and interviewed with a ton of police departments here right. and I just never followed through. Like as I started to get to that point and I'm like, you know, my, my dad wanted, this is my dad's dream. This wasn't my dream. My dad was a sheriff for 35 years. Oh wow. Like, so he, it, this was his dream. And I thought I wanted to do that for so long. Wait, your dad like, was a sheriff. He was a sheriff for 35 years where I am. Bro. Yes. That's oh, crazy, yeah. man. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What was that like? retired? Uh, you know, it's my dad's also Marine. So you wow. can imagine my life has been pretty hectic. Well, thank you for your point. dad's service or thank your dad for his service. I will. I will. Yeah. I will. I'm it's sure he, he appreciates day. that. Absolutely. Yeah, man. That's uh, uh <sighs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. My dad's hard as nails. And, um, I bet. you know, he's, he's, I, I owe everything I owe. I am to my parents. Absolutely. Like my mother, my, my dad, they raised me to be, if anybody thinks I'm a good man, it's it, I see right through that. And I'm like, okay, I think of my mom and dad because yeah. they're the ones, you know, that made me who I am. Um, but but that's, you, I'm sure you had like a rebellious period. Oh my gosh. I had my emo phase. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was, I was very, so ninth and ninth through 11th grade, I listened to hard ghetto music. <laughs> okay. Um, I did a lot of things that I don't think would be appropriate for me to talk about yeah, on yeah, this yeah. podcast. Sure. Um, and I, I, I smoked a lot of weed in high school, Bruce. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I smoked a lot of marijuana. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but I, I grew out of it. Like, and 
making those choices and doing those dumb things that I did when I was a kid, like made me realize like, dude, I don't even like yeah. I did it. And like, I'm, I'm over it now. Like, I don't even care. Like, so like, you know, yeah, it's, for sure. it's not good to do them at a young age, oh, but no, no, no. You know, I did. Who, dude, and, everyone uh, did. Like what, what, what state, what state are you in? I'm in Ohio. Okay. Ohio. Ohio okay. Yeah. So is, so, so in Oregon, like, like weed's been legal for a long time. Like, so I, Weed was never an issue. I never thought of like smoking pot. I don't partake in a ton. Of, I don't smoke a ton of pot. I do every now and then, but like, I never thought. Do you hear that bird? Did you hear I do. that bird? I do hear it it's yeah. driving me yeah, crazy. It's been out there for like <laughs> so. But I never, I never thought of it as like a big deal. Like cocaine and all the whole, you know that that was like a whole other ballpark for me. But if my dad was a marine and a sheriff, like. I'd feel scared smelling like a Crayola marker in my house or something like I would feel like so, I was on edge all the time. So the paranoia was there. Definitely. Like I, my, my dad was not dumb. Sure. Uh, neither, they, neither was my mother. Like they knew. Yeah. Right. But, but my parents were very smart in the sense, like they knew that I was do these things. So I was very restricted. Like I wasn't allowed to have a cell phone until I was 18, 18 wow. Bruce. I didn't have a cell phone until I was 18 years old. Yeah. I was only, I was able to have like, they, they taught me to learn how to drive when I was 15 years old. Okay. Um, so I went and got my learner's permit when I was 16, I was driving. Um, but I wasn't allowed to have a car or drive ever. I had a bicycle and I had to use that bike for years until I was 18. And then I was able to have a car. Wow. Um, yeah. So my, could, my life was very strict, but I did a lot of things like I wanted to do because I was young and arrogant and I, yeah. you know, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. I didn't want, cause my parents weren't like other parents. No like, doubt. Everyone was allowed to have to do things like, you know, within a certain limit. Whereas me, my dad's a Marine and I got to be in, in, in the house by 7 PM every yeah. night before the sun drops. And like, right. dude, it was, it was a wild childhood. It really was. I had a friend who's my, his dad was a, a police officer as well. And then our our best friend what his dad was like the chief of fire or for the fire department and i remember the same thing right like he wanted a car but he couldn't get a car so we drove him everywhere and and um now he's like the guy i look up to the most you know like he's my hero so he definitely but we did the same you know we would drink and smoke and stuff and be just we did it simply to to rebel and be kids and um yeah i don't think it has any i think of you as an extremely solid dude so i don't think there's a i think your parents are uh, i think your parents did an absolute wonderful job that's but that's cool that's a cool story i had no idea yeah i appreciate that man that was nice of you to say yeah i had no idea you're that's crazy ohio I'm, dude, I, I, i'm telling you bruce, bruce like if one day like i should write a book and I will send you a copy. My life has been not run of the mill by any means up until this point. And right. I never imagined, like I always got more enjoyment out of making people laugh and laughing with people and spending time with people. Yeah. I, I never imagined in a thousand years that I would discover a, uh, a web page called twitch.tv and I would be doing what I'm doing now. Like I never, I never in a million years. Oh, tell me about it, dude. I, I've been full time on Twitch since October third, two thousand seventeen. Two that years. That is, uh, that's incredible, dude. Congratulations, Thanks, man. man. Super successful to this point. I, I see you. I see you. I'm proud of you, man. Well, I, I mean, thank you. It's one of it's, it's very. I, I'm sure you have experienced the. Uh, sl- I will wake up in the middle of the night, drenched, not drenched in sweat, but scared to death that like my luck has run out or that, you know, I'm going to have to go back to the nine to five or, and somehow for 24 months, it hasn't happened yet, but it's, uh, it's definitely, I don't know, people, we talk about Twitch now as if it's like, you know, so great, but you, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's not easy. Oh, and and so, and so like, and, and dude, like I had no idea how close like you and I are very like we're in the same boat. Like I've been, it's been a roller coaster of emotions, and I know totally. you know that because you've been through it too. Yes, um, I've been full time for two years as well. Actually, my uh, anniversary will be uh, two years in January oh, of wow. next year. Congrats! So, but we're both affiliates. Yeah, and that's scary. Yeah, like there are so many places on the internet. People will tell you. Partners will tell you. Like, 
do not go full time until you're a partner at the very least, you know, and it's a yeah. jump, dude. Like, and there's no, I don't know anybody else besides you and I that's are an affiliate that's full time. That's, you know, you've been very successful. Right. Um, and I've, I've been nowhere near as successful as you have. Well, I don't know about that, uh, but yeah, uh, I, I, I think so, but which is great. Regardless, I, I mean, that doesn't matter. The fact that you've been able to be full time for two years, the fact that you, the fact that there's a, you know, that like, that's something to be celebrated regardless. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's been, it's dude, it's, it's constant stress, worried about this sleepless nights, you know, working on, yeah. and I mean, and dude, the, the podcast is a fantastic idea. That's why I was like, Thanks, man. so on board. Like, I'd love to just sit down and have a conversation with you. Right. I, I could do this every week. Yeah. I, I love it. And um, I think it's great. I think it's great for your channel and your content and for you as a content creator and what you're see, trying to achieve. I appreciate that. I, I think I've never really under. So like going back to what you said, like, you know, like you should be a partner or like partnered or, or don't do it as an affiliate or it's, it's always been extremely interesting to me because you, from those same people you hear break the mold, think outside the box, do, do risky stuff, be scared and then, but from those same people, you have these strict rules that you should follow. And it's, it's always like really contradictive to me. Like, you, you, you know what I mean? Like I, I will never tell somebody what they shouldn't or should, should or should not do. For me, it's always been assess uh, the risk and, and make sure that I can uh, clean up the, you know, clean up if I need to, I don't know, you know, it's like, uh, I guess have a, have a savings account sort of thing, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, man. And I, you know what? And honestly, I never thought about it like that, but that's, you're right. Um, people tell you that you shouldn't do it and, you know, but to be unique and creative and, right. do, and like, what I, I legitimately like, and you would have to tell me, like, I don't know of any other full-time affiliate dude. And like, I I'm on Twitter every single day. Like Twitter is such a huge tool. It's so important. Like I try to utilize it every single day Yeah. Um, to, to just, uh, you know, stretch my boundaries beyond what game, I'm, what section I'm in that day. You right. know what I mean? Like, um, and I just, I don't know of any others besides you and me. Like, I'm sure there is, but yeah. I just, there's not that many is my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't so know either. I never really thought about it. I'm, it's definitely a risk. Right. And we obviously we both know that. But um, yeah, like it's it's different. And uh, I, dude, you're killing it. I mean, so it's working. So do you ever, I, I don't believe in that. That bounce. Do you subscribe to like a mission statement sort of mindset? What do you mean? Like elaborate you, on that. Well, so so like. um like you know like a, a business has like a mission statement right like uh like you know we will uh we we biz, we as so and so um strive to provide x y and z so that you feel a b c right like i've always kind of told myself i guess a reason for streaming like do you have do you have a do you have a is there a reason that you stream that you think about when you're having a tough time uh, the reason why i stream is i i, I really enjoy i get a, for me personally like my enjoyment comes not out of playing a game full time or like whatever games that right. my enjoyment's not there like that's fun that's fantastic but for me in the moment of something that happens that's funny or sad like every day when i go live my goal is to make whoever i'm broadcasting to feel something right because i don't i don't feel that nowadays that enough people feel anything every the world is very numb yeah so if if they can come in and they can feel like a sad but that's like it's like a story that i'm telling with a character that day and they feel sad or they they're laughing with me because when something's funny i can't i just laugh like i can't even I, i'd be i'm so terrible when it comes to role play games because like i'm role playing then something funny happens and i laugh right there in the spot yeah and it's terrible for editing but it's but no my that's yeah, that's, that's, that's that's my that's my that's what i want to do so i want to make people feel something every single time from start to finish if i can at some point mission accomplished yeah 
that's good. A lot of you'd be shocked. I think I'd be shocked too at how many people don't have a mindset when they stream. They stream uh, simply to make money or to increase a f or to uh, increase a metric. Like their their mission for streaming that day is to get more followers or to have a higher metric viewer count than yesterday, and that becomes uh, that becomes all to them. And I think right, yeah, and I think like. A lot of the quote unquote like success that I've had, even though I'm an affiliate, is because when you get to the partnership stage, you've realized that and people always say like metrics don't matter and all that. They do matter, but they're not going to increase and they're, your metrics aren't going to go up unless the reason for you doing anything in life is has a reason right like otherwise we just we go live on twitch we just bounce around in space like there's no reason for us to be there like what is your reason to be on twitch like what is the reason behind this podcast like if you do things that don't have a a a, 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 a means of existence like what's the point of doing them you know yeah, i don't know no That's I, I'm, I'm absolutely with you it's kind of interesting like how many i think I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. It's. it's I was just going to say it's interesting how many people create Twitch accounts and have a and and want to stream, but don't really have any idea why they want to stream. It's. It. You know. It's become. I think, like you're saying. I. Th I think the intention of. I'd say fifty percent of people when they start streaming is good. Yeah. You know, they want to oh, make yeah. friends. Well, if I'm going to play games, I may as well stream it, right? Right. But the obsession with numbers on this platform on any streaming platform is so bad that it just becomes a blur and you get lost in those things and like people automatically like who doesn't want to do twitch full-time like who doesn't <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah. honestly in the entertainment it's the entertainment industry you know it's right. something that's ever needed so very important yeah um but you know people get lost in the idea of doing that and they kind of forget why they started and then it just becomes a blur of I need this many subs this day. I need yeah. this many followers this day, which is ridiculous. I mean, it's important to think about those things as a full-time streamer. And it's, it's the ugly side that I don't, I don't like to talk about it. You, like, have, it's to, just, you have to do it though. You're right. You have, but you have to, right. you have to, it's so important to think about. And I think, but I think too, the metrics are a direct, it, when you, when you see things going down, there could just, it could just be, that could just be, who knows, really? I just think that I wish Twitch would teach more the the idea that said that that's you know I wish Twitch would push out this mindset that if things aren't look you know if things aren't as good this week or this month as they were last time to maybe take a look at the mindset going into it, and I know that's super easy to say, right? Like I just have found that if I keep my, if I go back to, like you said, the reason I started and I hold, and I think about that when I look over and I'm like, shit, I lost 30 subs today. And I just remember why I started. It seems to be, or at least it's been for the last 24 months that everything works out. So like, and I think, and and what people can learn from from that um, specifically in us is like if you're doing something that you love to do and you you're getting a privilege a blessing to do it full time like and I've made a habit personally for me is I it's and it's scary but I don't ever look at my sub count I keep my stats completely closed at all times that I don't even look at them I don't even check them after stream unless something crazy happens that day yeah like so and so gifted a hundred or two hundred subs then I'll look at it right because then it's like holy <laughs> shit like yeah that, that's wild yeah. um but and it's scary not to do that but I generally find that if you're you're doing something that you love to do and you're remembering why you started doing it in the first place like you said, everything kind of works out in the way it's supposed to. And yeah. it doesn't, you don't need to pay attention to those. Like you need to pay attention to them, but you do not need to focus on them so much that it consumes you every single day. Cause then, like you said, you're not streaming for the reason why you started. You're streaming to, 
to no end, essentially. Like yeah. you're just focused on your numbers that day and then you're just numb, essentially. For sure. That's absolutely right. And I think a lot of people, uh, I get quite, people ask me all the time, like, whoa, you have X and X amount of whatever. And it's not, to me, it's never like, wow. I mean, there is, there are times where I'm like, wow, you know, like, geez, we are, you know, sitting at this many right now, but it's, it usually can be justified in my mind because I'm like, wow, we had really fucking great streams this month. Like we had a lot of fun and I don't, and I'm sure there's a correlation there, but I can't help but think, you know, it feeds off of it. Like I'm having a good time. Chat's having a good time. They show their appreciation. I show my appreciation. I have a good time. They have a good time. They show their appreciation. I show my appreciation and it just grows. Yeah, absolutely. Everything feeds off of it. Yeah. Everything you do feeds into chat and they feed it back and then you show appreciation and it just never ends. Right. So like you genuinely have to enjoy doing this and the energy will feed. And that's why I say I, I'm, I'm real big on that. Like, you know, when I meet people, I can, I, I feed off whatever energy they're doing. And I, I think that correlates to Twitch chat, um, huge in huge ways. I'm sure there are studies out there that show that it's just like, I'm sure what we're talking about right now is applicable to most careers or a lot of them. It'd be, I'd be really interested to see like this mindset and these like lessons that we're learning in the space that we work in. Like, I wonder, I, I, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it applies everywhere or to the, you know, I'm sure like bartenders probably have similar, you ever think about that? Like how much live streamings like being like a bartender or being like a doctor or a therapist or uh, you know and, and honestly and and one and that that dude that's another whole yeah, thing yeah. that we could talk about but like <laughs> people people will tell you all the time like one of the biggest pieces of advice that somebody will give you is streamers aren't therapists yeah don't yeah, yeah. just don't and and in some ways like i feel that like there are people that come into my stream um that well, i didn't mean fi- help- i didn't mean fi- like actually a therapist okay well so like you go to the bar right yeah. so I'm, I'm not a i'm not a big alcohol person right right you go to the bar and you're down and some people this is all they have they go to the bar they know the bartender they know their first and last name they know their family for sure you know like they go there to vent and it's kind of like that in twitch chats regard yeah right people will tell you that streamers aren't therapists don't listen to that but you know, and in some ways you, you shouldn't because it's super, super um, energy draining to you. It'll be super negative and like it'll bring you down. You won't note it. You won't notice or know it right away. But yeah. eventually over time, you're going to like, OK, this person comes in every single time. And like, I'm just super sad already because that last time you talked to them, their demeanor was sad and it was because something happened. Um, yeah, I that's fully. A, that's an interesting. I, yeah. I, I fully like when people like I know everybody by first name that comes in and like when they come in, like I know, like I'll ask about something like how are they doing and I, they'll tell me things, you know, and I'll, I'll you sure. know, I'll talk them through it or try to give them advice on it. And, but the important thing is not to dwell on it. Right. Because then it becomes the point of the stream. Then it, you really do become a therapist. Are you talking about uh, when somebody's like my dog just died and life is hopeless sort of thing. Or are you yes. talking about and that, and that dude? And that happens every single day because yeah. people are in different situations everywhere you go. And I right. always try not to be so judgmental because, and I tell people like quick reaction is not the way because right. you don't know their circumstances. You don't know what they're going through. And, and like, it's so important to remember that they are feeling something too, that you might not necessarily see. And- oh, no doubt. I mean, for a lot of people like this is, this is like their escape from all of that. And some people are more, some people are more vocal about that. Some people don't talk about that at all. Yeah, absolutely. But, but it's still there for them, you know? Yeah, but, absolutely. Absolutely. And I didn't mean to cut you off. I get, I get what you're saying though. Like there, the people, you know, there is, there's people who, who are having a, a bad day or a bad time. And then there's people who always have a bad day or always have a bad time. And neither one, I don't think is, is wrong, but there, you know, there are situations where like one line of text in a chat can change the mood from really great to, to a downer. And us as streamers have to be able to respond to that correctly or don't. 
I mean, absolutely. I think, and people, people will tell you like don't do it and that yeah. was that was my whole point like i always listen to what everyone has to say like i want i want them to be able to come to me like they look to what i do as their getaway and i definitely want that for them so that they don't have to deal with whatever they're dealing with yeah you know yeah um i don't completely shut that like i don't want to you know don't get into the gory details and don't talk about it every <laughs> yeah. single day because yeah. it drags down the mood right but you know don't be afraid to be like, Hey man, this happened. Like, yo dude, I'm so sorry. Like, honestly, right. man, I'm here. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Just, you know, we can chat, you know, it's fine. You know, and I do that every single day and people will tell you not to do that. They and will. I can I've never it. been told not. That's interesting. I've never been told mm-hmm. not to do that. I I'm telling you, I, all, I see it everywhere. Huh? Like what uh, dude, YouTube videos, like, cause I looked at th- everything that I did was streaming. I researched and studied streaming and I still do every single day. And I have for five years, right? Because there's always something that you can learn and be better at whether you know it or not. So it's good to see people that are doing something different from you and see, okay, yeah. like you could take something away not like copying someone's content. That's not what I mean. But like, you know, if, if somebody's having a hard time and someone comes in and you well, get out of here, I don't want you in here. And right. you're like, okay, well, mod comes to you like, dude, that was really messed up. You should probably reevaluate how you handle that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You watch somebody else, see how they handle it. See, and I, act accordingly. I need, maybe I need to, I've, I've never watched like, I, it, maybe that's bad. Maybe that may, I mean, I'm sure it, I'm sure I could learn so much. I've never, I've never, um, besides like reaching out to friends to see how they've configured like OBS and stuff. I, I've never really, uh, li- like checked out like advice or how to do things better on, but, on Twitch. I maybe, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I don't, I don't think you need to. I think, I think generally some people have a better idea of what they should be doing or what they can do naturally without faking it. And I think you're right in that lane. Like you're just so naturally, yourself oh, it's entertaining it's fun to watch it really is fun to watch so it's it's not hard for you to i'm not saying it's not hard everyone has their own difficulty no i know what you mean but it's so natural for you that i don't think you ever needed to you don't need you didn't need to research the things that i researched oh, i'm well, an idiot no no, no <laughs> like no, i no. had to look up so much stuff no and, and you have dude you're straight you you wouldn't be where you're at unless you had equally successful and solid streams I'm just saying, like, when I see things on Twitter or YouTube or stuff, I may read it and, and or particularly on Twitter, it's like somebody comes in or like there was a huge thing about song requests, like whether or not song requests should be or shouldn't be. And then like, uh, you know, I, and I've seen the like therapist thing, like we're not therapists. And it's like, I don't have to, but I don't have to be a therapist to be like a friend to somebody like. Absolutely. But so I think it's I, that's that's what I meant. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry, no, no. And I think it's but I think it's super important to draw that line. Like if you're having a tough time, it's worth it to yourself to to go and talk to somebody who's devoted their life to helping you. That guy is not me. It's not you either. Right. Like it's like um, it, remember reading strategy guides when we were kids for like Nintendo 64 games. Like, oh my gosh god like, wouldn't yes. you read a strategy guide or go or would you rather read a strategy guide from somebody who's winging it or would you rather read a strategy guide from somebody who's played the game six hundred thousand times and knows it like the back of their hand like that's right. the difference here right like, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah that makes way more sense than anything i was saying <laughs> no for sure i mean it's just it's 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 uh it's the most efficient way of doing something in my opinion but Dude, like, I should probably go talk to a therapist most times, but I'll reach out to my buddy who, who you know, is, just has a shoulder for me to lean on. I'm no, you know, right. there's a time and place no, for I, everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, diverting completely off topic. I do have some questions. Just a few. Three. Okay. Okay do so we're going to do a complete 180 here <laughs> okay this is completely so these are these are some video game related questions for you okay uh, it's right, been super right. super okay. f- interesting for me do you remember the very first video game that you ever played yes hit me what was it 
Commodore 64. Well, that's a console. No, no, no. It it was it was oh I'm sorry oh okay oh oh, oh isn't geez, it a console right. dude you're scaring me no it is it's it's a computer it's a computer it's right a computer Commodore 64 right, right. Is a computer yeah yeah well I okay think it was you're, like right. A... you're totally right um I can't remember um what it's called because it was so long ago dude I was young I was like eight years old right okay it was, it was on a green screen there was literally no graphics okay um it might have been Oregon Trail Oregon it, Trail it might have been but it was it was Commodore sixty four. And I, I believe it was Oregon Trail, actually. I'm almost certain it was. Okay. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a very common one. Do you remember the first game that you really couldn't get enough of? Like, for me, that game was uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Oh, such a good one, dude. That's so good. Yeah. Um, For, for me, it was the very first game that I was a, officially addicted to was Super Smash Brothers. The oh, very wow. first one. Yeah. I read a thing yeah. recently. That game was so popular. Was that the game that was on the GameCube? Was that on GameCube? That was N64. Okay, so the the one that was on GameCube or was that Melee? I, I don't know. Super Smash Brothers Melee, correct? Yeah. So that that get this Melee was so popular that there were there were like independent video game stores uh, that would that would only the only way you could get Melee is if you bought a GameCube and four controllers. And they would still they would still sell out of it just in order like that's how popular it was. People were who had GameCubes were buying GameCubes and four controllers just because that's how rare Melee was where they lived in like Japan and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I I vaguely remember that. See, when I had gotten my N64, I got it from my cousins and my mother bought it for my cousins for Christmas because they got it when it came out and they did nothing. They did no homework. They didn't eat. They skipped meals. They, they wouldn't take showers. They were addicted. And my aunt was like, nope, four months into it. And the Christmas hit, she was like, you're going to take this because <laughs> you, Holy these, crap. this is ridiculous. Like it was bad. And I got it. And at the time, you know, cause I was asking my parents, like, this is kind of cool. I kind of want this. And my dad wanted it too. He wanted to try it. Yeah. Um, he was like, son, I can't get it anywhere. I, I looked everywhere. Like I, we would go to Sears and they would have a display when they had a video game section before. They don't have them anymore. They haven't had them for years. But yeah. we'd go to Sears and I'd, I'd play Super Smash Brothers, the demo, over and over and over again until they were done. Wow. So Super Smash Bros. was your... Would you argue that that's your favorite game of all time? No. What's your, fa- no. What's your favorite... What What's the, the chart topper in your mind of all time? Oh, man. That's, it's tough, man. It's tough. I've I've played so many games in my life. I I don't know. No, but I, if you had to I, if I you had to, to go and live in a cabin and you could only bring one video game with you, what would it be? Oh my god, that's such a difficult question. I can't answer that. I don't know. Uh You got to answer it though. I, I don't have to answer. <laughs> Come on, man. No, I don't have to answer it. <laughs> Just uh, one game. I would Oh man, dude, that's that's like really like that's a tough question, dude. If I could only play one game yeah. in a cabin, how long am I in that cabin for? For the rest of your life. The rest of my life? Yeah. Like do I get to live or do I, do I just have you to just play have that to game bring only? that one game? That's it. That's it. There's nothing else. Just that's the right. one game. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, dude, it's so difficult. Oh um, I've thought about this question so much, man. Just do you me. have an answer for that? Yeah, of course. But I want to hear yours what, first. No. What, what do you no. <laughs> Come on. Okay. So, you know I play Daisy. Yeah. I play Daisy so much it couldn't be that game. You can you have an internet connection too, by the way. Well, uh, absolutely. Well, I hope so. To connect of to course. the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> but nothing um, else. No other games. So, oh my no other games? No other games. Oh, man. this is a cruel question. Yeah. This is cruel. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot uh, asking it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I I can't think. I don't know. Is there another question? Like, just can grab I one. Just one? grab a game. Come on. Come on, JR. Got a game. I, I don't uh, brother, I don't know. <laughs> uh I don't know. I don't know. I I j- Skyrim. Okay. I, I Skyrim. Yeah. I, I I guess. I don't that's know. That's a good that's a good one. Skyrim would be Skyrim, yeah, that's a good one. I can see that. Yeah, I mean, man, that's 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 a really on the spot. I did not expect that at all. Mine is Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation One. Oh my God! Talk about old school, dude. 
I haven't played that in years. You got to think like how the replayability would have to be huge, right? Like there has to be multiple different ways to play. But at the same time, like, dude, you got to think about music. You got to think about atmosphere. You got to think about everything. If there's only going to be one game that you play forever, Skyrim's a beautiful, that's a beautiful choice, man. Or I would almost say like, I have you played Red Dead? Redemption no, 2? No, no. Oh, nope. man, dude, if you like Skyrim, <sighs> buddy, you got to you got to give Red Dead Redemption 2 a try. And I know See, it's weird. telling me that, man, but I haven't played the first one. Either or I, I never played the first one either. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I could dive into that. I don't know. Like, see, see, I never finished Skyrim. So, like, the reason why I chose Skyrim is because I know there is a ton to do in that game. Oh, yeah. And I've never, I paid, like, 30 minutes into it, and I never played it again. I never touched. But, but see, in Red Dead Redemption, like, you could jump on your horse and go up to a hill and just go hunting all day. Or well, you, you do that in day Z. You do that. Yeah, absolutely. Same sort of thing. Same sort of thing. But with Red Dead, it's just seen. There are a lot of similarities between Red Dead and, and uh, Daisy. It'd be like if Daisy had NPCs. It'd be like if Daisy, imagine if you were going through a town in Daisy and you ran into somebody who was like a computer and it and and but played like a somewhat friendly character. Right. That would be interesting, yeah. man. What if Daisy added NPCs? Well, Mm, maybe coming we'll see could you imagine like if electro was held like he- like safeguarded by a bunch of npcs with ak's oh dude see daisy has had npcs before in the past daisy I'm standalone for, for standalone oh you mean yeah, in Mod- no not standalone that's right they did mm-hmm. huh yeah armor 2 daisy had npcs and you could do missions and whoa that boss would guard sweet. towns uh, let me tell you they need to add that to standalone. That would I be agree. crazy. That would mm-hmm. be real. That'd be a ton of fun. All right. Oh, yeah. Last question. What game are you looking the most forward to in the future? Um, and it could be like obscure. It could be an expansion or it could be DLC or something like that. I would have to say, honestly, I, uh, see, I don't know if it's been confirmed or not, though. Um, I would say Left 4 Dead 3. See, I don't know if that's been confirmed, but I'm pretty certain I saw that it was. I, Left 4 Dead 3? I don't 3. know. I've never yeah, played Le- any of the Left 4 Deads. What? Yeah, really? I know. Dude, I didn't get a PC. Uh, I didn't get a gaming PC, like a PC to game on until 2014. Well, I hate to tell you, but Left 4 Dead was on console way before that. <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah but i didn't mm-hmm. but my but like i was i played console but you know it was more like halo oh uh, god yeah who didn't play halo right right well by the way so the last person who was on their their game that they were looking forward to most was the uh the, the new halo yeah the collection that's coming out which dude you want to you want to get thrown down the road of nostalgia go look at some of those early like man early halo <clears throat> atmospherically with like the music and the maps how they were so borderline oh God. It, nothing was on them <laughs> like it's oh, just crazy they were simple but they were fantastic no actually yeah. i take that back i'm going to change my choice am i allowed to do that yeah okay the game that i'm looking forward to most is the resident evil 3 remake that is what i'm looking forward to which i do believe is 2021 i think is being released or so 2020. Did you grow up a Resident Evil fan? Like, did you yes. play? Res- did you did you have a Dreamcast? I had a Sega Dreamcast. I had a Commodore 64, an Atari, an N64, a Sega Dreamcast, Sega Genesis. Um, wow. I had the. Did I say the N64 already? I think I did. But well, I had a with, Game Ma- with with Super Smash Bros. You said that you got it from your. Correct aunt, from aunt. my cousins. Yeah. Yep. yep. <clears throat> yeah, I would say definitely the new because they read they recently redid Resident Evil 2 and they did a sensational job and I played that game three times through and I can't get enough of it. Really? It's fantastic. Oh, yeah, it's so good. It's another series I, I've never touched. Oh, well, see, but you don't really do good in the horror thing, do you? Fuck no, dude. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah well, I played a horror game like I one Christmas. Our neighbors called the police. 
because I was screaming. Like, oh a, my god! Yeah, yeah, oh well, yeah, dude. There, you, whole uh, that's a whole other episode. We, we had some downstairs see, we, neighbors. We, I relate to that me. too, but just I've had the police call on me for screaming too. <laughs> I, one of these days, I'll have to tell you where dude I rage came from because well, tell me where did it come I'm from? so far. I'm I'm so far from that. I don't know if we have enough time. We got we got ten minutes. We got you can tell okay, us the story so, in ten minutes. Okay, so well, I mean, long story short, um, I when I when I started playing games, um, I was I was kicked away from Smash Brothers. Actually, my mother took my N sixty four away. Like she took it from my cousins and gave it to me. She took it away from me, um, and that was because I got so good at Smash Brothers, I would get so mad when I was getting beat, or even like I put the NPC or the computer on the hardest difficulty, and I'd beat it over and over and over and over again. And when it would start to beat me, I'd start screaming and saying potty mouth words I yeah. shouldn't have been saying when I, when I was that you age. You son of a gun. Well, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. and one day when no one was home, I was playing a playthrough, the campaign, quote unquote, for Smash Brothers, which was to go through the end, fight every character and fight a giant hand in a white glove. Um, I put it on the hardest difficulty and I played it through and I made it all the way to the end. And it's not, not like any other day where I'd beat it a million times already. I was, I was just getting beat and I was screaming uh, F bombs. Like I'm like 12 years old at this point. Right. Yeah. And my dad came right upstairs with his USMC jacket, his ball cap pulled forward. Like he looked like he just got out of basic. He stared at me with a death stare, ripped that thing out of the wall. And Oh God, I'll never forget that. Um, But that was when I really started to notice like, dude, I was like a little shit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when I was losing, I was a little pouty brat. Right. Um, so then years go by. I quit playing video games because I had them taken away from me. Um, and then Xbox 360 came out after Xbox. Um, I wasn't allowed to have an Xbox. I played an Xbox at my friend Jeffrey's house when I was a kid. Um, that was the only time, the only exposure I had to it. So then Xbox 360 came out and it was like the next generation in console gaming. Like it was huge. You remember when that came out? Oh yeah, of like course. Halo. Oh my God. It's just incredible time. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I got that and I played the call of duty Four modern warfare beta on, it was released on Xbox 360 at a friend's house. And I'm like, dude, I have to get this. I played it for six hours. I went after school and I stayed there. Wow. <laughs> and like, I just played it and I'm like, dude, and I got so good at it that I would just, it just reoccurring. I'd start to get mad when I was losing. Yeah. And I'd start screaming. And then I had a clan, you know, moving forward. Right. Time went on. I had a clan and I was, we were really good. We did game battles. We did professional call of duty even. Wow. Um, and when we'd start losing, <laughs> I'd start screaming, get mad. Like you guys need to do this, hold this choke point. This is ridiculous. Common sense, blah, blah, blah. And one day, one of my teammates was like, dude, you rage way too much when we play. You need to calm down. And I'm like, dude, I rage because you guys are terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I and like the words left my mouth and I'm like, that's it. That's like, it. I'm just I'm going to change because it used to be J Rizzle 360 was my first <laughs> Xbox 360. Dude, that is such <laughs> Game a, no, that is such a that is such a I just felt it wash over me when you said that. I was like, man, it's take me back. Oh my god. Had goodness. the Izzle in there. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude that's, so that was that was my name. And uh Dude I Rage is way you know, Dude I Rage. And then I just I just been sticking with it, staying true to my roots. And obviously, I think you can tell, or maybe you can't tell, I don't know. I progressively changed way i've gotten away from that like i've found my energy like my chi almost not really and like I'm, i don't believe in any of that stuff but yeah you know um i've i found a way to like who cares right right i'm, I'm way too old for this stuff I, I don't care it's a game it's supposed to be fun you yeah. know i'm not going to be you know so absolved in it that i'm just angry that just anger is the only thing i want to feel um so i've i've worked a lot on myself to get away from that i was a very angry person growing up i, I wasn't allowed to do much which is why i think i was angry because my you no know, we talked about that yeah yeah um so yeah so i just kind of kept it just as a reminder of how far i've come so i'm still dude i rage to this day even though i don't really don't really rage know, no not really i mean i think it's normal for some ga- like games are supposed to be like an escape right something to relax to but there are no there are 
there are more times than not when you need something to relax to after playing a video game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. No, it gets you. Especially like in DayZ, you get geared up and then you you uh, trip over a rock and die or you fall down some stairs through the earth or something like no doubt. Oh my God, yeah. every day. It's gotten a lot better though. We won't get into the DayZ thing, but like it is definitely, I played it uh, two or three days ago for the first time in months and it's like, damn man, they're like, this is good. They're working. Yeah. They're working. Well, dude, thank you so much uh, for taking the time out of your day to do this. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. This was really, really good for me. Uh, I hope you did too. Oh, uh, absolutely. Dude, I, you let me know and we can do this anytime. Yeah. You want to get, let's do, you want to start a show. Let's get a bunch of people together. <laughs> let's do it every week. I'd for, be down. for sure. Yeah, we could talk about it. But no, I appreciate it, man. Um, And yeah, uh, if, where can we, we where can we find you? Twitch, Twitter? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch, Dude I Rage. Just one word? No underscores? No underscores, right. no spaces. We I like mean, I knew simple. that, but a lot of people, maybe somebody <laughs> else didn't, you know? So. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Dude I Rage and Twitter.com forward slash Dude I Rage. Perfect, man. Thank you so much. Um, thank you again, again for, thank for you. everything. Thank you for having me, dude. Cool, man. And thank you so much for listening. Make sure you go check out Dude I Rage on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash dude i rage uh, he streams all the time absolutely awesome stream uh go give him a follow go check him out thank you so much for listening take care of yourselves be good to one another treat each other right i will catch you on the next episode i hope you have a great rest of your day do not work too hard and yeah thanks again i love you thanks for the support see you on the next one peace out